an international team of researchers are focused on the Gulf of Mexico. There we go. These are some of their stories, intimate portraits of research, innovation, discovery. I'm Matt Damon. Please join me on a journey marked by unexpected twists and turns. My name is Bianca Perhaska, and I am a PhD candidate at Florida State University in biology, and I study the stress and reproductive physiology of elaphobranes. In my undergraduate class for marine biology, I would say we were about 90% females and 10% males, so it's really kind of turning into this female-dominated field, but then as far as the people that attain the higher education, it's still more male bias but I don't feel like I haven't gotten opportunities that I could have gotten or didn't get just because I'm a female. And I actually just received a female-only scholarship this past year from the Philanthropy Education Organization. So there are some opportunities that are afforded to me that wouldn't have been afforded to a male, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> I'm Ramana Sade. I'm a pulmonary critical care physician at Johns Hopkins University. I think overall I was very lucky because my parents were very encouraging of me pursuing my dreams and hopes. When I was young, I remember uh, going to my father and saying how I was interested um, in uh, taking care of patients and being involved and I thought at that time that uh, my I was I should be a nurse because I was a physician because I was a woman um, at that time my uh, father said that's a noble profession but really I shouldn't consider my professions based on my gender and that I should choose whatever I wanted to be based on what I was interested in um, and over time I decided to be a physician my name is Karen Maloney I'm from Hamburg University of Technology and I'm a master in mechanical engineering Germany is a country of engineers and still nowadays we were like maybe 10% of girls during university so um, when I tell people what I do for a living they always say oh yeah that must be tough as a woman or why do you do that I mean there's easier things to do but um, I found that when you're good people come to accept it in the end but you always have to be better than your male colleagues. My name is Kelly Dorgan and I'm a senior marine scientist at the Dauphin Island Sea Lab. I guess I experienced more of, of feeling like a minority as a woman in engineering classes that I took in graduate school and there I was one of the few women in the classes and it took me a little bit to figure out that, that the men in my classes uh, didn't necessarily know more than I did, they just were louder than me. And so that was something that I kind of figured out by experiencing it. My name is Leela Schlenker, I'm a PhD student at the University of Miami. I've done a lot of work working on fishing boats, collaborating with a lot of different types of people in a lot of pretty rough environments sometimes. So I think as a woman, I've sort of gotten used to the idea that I need to work a lot harder to just prove that I'm capable and I know what I'm doing, which has been frustrating at times. Ready, one, two. I've worked with a lot of really supportive people who've been fabulous, and I've also worked with people who didn't trust my judgment or trust that I had the skills to know what to do in a certain situation or, or that I was capable of even just doing work on a boat. So that's, that's been hard and it's something that's kind of been present throughout. I'm Margaret Leinen. I'm the director of Scripps Institution of Oceanography and vice chancellor for marine sciences at University of California, San Diego. Things have changed a lot during the time that I've been in oceanography. When I started, there were restrictions about going to sea. Uh, there were restrictions about a lot of things associated with graduate school and about oceanography. Fortunately, a lot of that has changed. The demographics are changing. We're still not at a point in most fields of science where it's 50-50 men and women. If you grow up and you never see a woman scientist, and you never see one on television, or you never see one in the movies, or you never hear about one, it's not something that you start thinking about as a, a direction for you to go. Having more role models is really important for uh, getting more women involved in science.
I was the first uh, female director of an oceanographic institution uh, when I was dean at uh, University of Rhode Island School of Oceanography. Uh, and then was the first female assistant director for geoscience at NSF. And finally, now the first female director of Scripps Oceanography. Today, the scientific community is working together to push the boundaries of what they've learned about oil spills and what still needs to be discovered.